Good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Andrew here on this Thursday afternoon on Earth Day, and been I'm a little bit later than I than I thought I would be on this today. And in fact, I was so busy yesterday that I forgot about doing daily words. So we're gonna get times two today. So and apologize for those on Facebook Live on the Facebook Live feed for how bright things might be. So if you're blinded by the light, I you know it's that time of day when the light really starts coming into my office. So. But anyways, the other side is kind of filled with boxes right now as I'm working on purging and packing my office as I get ready to make my move to Cameron Park in June. And so we're, things are getting a little real here. Things are also getting real here on the church front as well because we are getting ready to relaunch our in, first in-person worship this Sunday. I know it's God only knows it's been way too long since we've done this before. We've had a few start, starts and stops, and I know I've felt people's pain. I've felt people's anger at times and frustration. So I know there's a lot of bureaucracy still involved in this, but, you know, it's kind of what we're having to deal with in order to reopen. So it's just trying to work together and work together. And for once, the church and county are almost on the same page for... for so... You know, if there's some good that comes out of that, and I'm looking forward to seeing people on Sunday again. I know that it's, you know, we've really missed each other. I know we're going to be very happy to see each other after not worshiping together. I mean, we've run into each other at the post office or at the grocery store. So the only update I do have is that our 1030 service is pretty much at capacity, at our modified capacity, although, you know, these numbers are not going to be in concrete. We might adjust, be able to safely adjust. We might even be able to have more in our space as we are up to 50% of our space. It's just to allow for physical distancing, but hopefully maybe the CDC will have some new updates as well on that. I know for outdoors, they do. They just recently revised some of their standards for masking today, so we may not have to wear masks as much now if we're gathering outdoors. And I'm actually hoping to maybe look explore of doing an outdoor service, some outdoor worship, once the weather is a little more reliable, and hopefully we don't have any thunder bumpers or or rain later in the summer, although we still need rain right now in May. So probably June is if we would do some outdoor worship service, especially for my last Sunday on June 20th. It'd be nice to actually be able to not have to worry about RSVPs and we have some guests that want to come up here and not deny anybody that a chance to worship together for the last time together before our new pastor begins. So either case, if you haven't RSVP'd yet, you've got a couple more hours, although... We do have space at the 9 a.m. service in the fellowship hall, so if you haven't RSVP'd yet, so please do. And so with that, I um, this Sunday we're going to be talking about the Good Shepherd. We're gonna our sermon's gonna be, in fact, the fourth Sunday of Easter is usually the Good Shepherd Sunday, is what they call it, because all of the scripture readings pertain to the shepherd, and that's the same case as we explore Psalm 23 and John 10, 11 through 18, one of Jesus' I am statements. So Psalm 23 is very well known, very beloved, and it's one of those that's often read at a memorial service, but it also is a, it's a psalm that brings comfort. So when we're in our darkest days, when we're feeling like we're in the valley of the shadow of death, or when we're going through a difficult time, we can turn to the psalms. And this is one that's a very pastoral image, a very sustaining image, very positive image. So let us read this, and this is from the King James Version. Um, this is one of the most well-known versions of it. And So even though I don't, usually I use the New Revised Standard Version, I, the King James Version is one of the exceptions I make for Psalm 23. So let us hear these words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So whenever I go walking along Spanish Creek, I always 
kind of get that image. The light leadeth me beside still waters, or even the living water, the Jesus saying, I am the living water. And it's just a wonderful image, especially when I look out around the Sierra Valley, when driving through the Sierra Valley, or when I'm driving even just looking through our the American Valley here or Indian Valley, it just reminds me of the meadow, the beautiful meadows there. Or when I'm hiking on the Bucks Creek Loop, there's some little meadows in there that has this wonderful little clearing that's filled with all these little wildflowers. And this is the time of year that I just love to see all the colors blooming. And it reminds me of that wonderful image that we have there. And so our next reading is from the Gospel of John. And John's one of my favorite Gospels. It's what's called a very high Christology. And it basically focuses a lot on Jesus' miracles and Jesus' glory. So actually, John and John, the miracles are referred to as signs. And so we have the book of signs and the book of glory and how Jesus is talking about how he is glorifying God through his ministry here on earth. Well, we also have seven I am statements of Jesus. And this is one of the I am statements here in chapter 10. So we're going to look at verses 11 through 18 of John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and living of these scriptures getting cloudy outside, so it's getting a little dark here in the office. So, what a wonderful image, though. This is one of my favorite of the I am statements of Jesus. I, in addition, I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the living water. Or like Pastor Pam Abbey preached about last Sunday, I am the true vine. Among, I am the, the way, the truth, and the life. And each of these I am statements connects Jesus to basically incarnation or God coming down to earth in human form as if you go back to the Old Testament, the uh, books of Genesis and Exodus, and you hear God say, I am, that's a name for God. And so Jesus is taking up that name for God and I am, which I didn't never thought about that until I was watching my friend and colleague, Pastor Becky at Portola in her sermon. And she and Pastor Don at Fallon, United, Epworth United Methodist Church in Fallon, were doing a series on the Gospel of John and very insightful. And I never knew that about I never really considered that about the I am statements. So you learn something new every day. But the thing is that Jesus is our good shepherd. You know, when we have this opportunity to listen to his voice, you know, when so many times though we have so many things that are competing for his voice, we're having so many things that are competing for the voice of the shepherd. You know, we have, you know, the talking heads on cable news. We have, you know, people railing, you know, mouthing off to, for or against something. We have, you know, we have so many, like, advertisers that, you know, tempt us for different things. You know, we see things on TV or in the media that tempt us toward things that might not be healthy or might be a little harmful. But yet we have the voice of the shepherd to listen to. And that's the voice of the shepherd we've been able to listen to, even though the building church buildings have been closed this last year and month that you know we have it and I listen to the shepherd's voice and you know oftentimes people will say equate the pastor of a church with the shepherd but the fact is we're following Jesus the good shepherd too and so it's up for all of us to listen to the voice of the good shepherd to lean into the good shepherd when we're in times of despair and trial so that's all I got for today. Um, like I say, I've been spending the last couple hours working in the sanctuary as I've been dusting, doing some dusting and vacuuming. And vacuuming pew cushions in the whole sanctuary took about an hour, but it's good workout, though. So I've burned up, burned up and haven't had lunch yet, so I'm 
if I'm making some rude bodily noises, that's a result of that. So, anyways, before we head into our weekend, let's join together for a word of prayer. Loving God, God of the Good Shepherd, and our Shepherd on our today, be with us this weekend as we prepare to relaunch our in-person worship. Be with me as I prepare to lead our church. Be with Bishop Carcano, our District Superintendent Blake, as they work toward, and the Cabinet, as they work toward discerning who our new pastor will be in July. Be with Pastor Mike and the Foothills United Methodist Church and myself as we make this transition on their end as Pastor Mike moves into his new appointment. We pray, Lord, for our congregation, for each person. We pray, Lord, for forgiveness for where we've missed the mark, where the leadership has missed the mark this last year and a half. We pray for forgiveness of the frustration, some of the anger and disappointment that we have caused. We know this has been a very long year and month. We know we've missed each other. We know we've felt disconnected. We've been frustrated, we've been impatient. We've been exhausted by all of this pandemic, Lord. And so, Lord, we give all of this to you. We give you our pain, our anger, our disappointment, and our frustrations. And we die to these, Lord, so that we can resurrect and continue living into this resurrection through this season of Easter as we relaunch, and we know it's not going to be perfect, and we pray for your grace when things get rough. We pray for your grace when we're disappointed because things aren't the same. We pray for your grace when we feel dis disappointed or discouraged. We pray for your grace in all of our imperfections. We pray, Lord, for all of those who will be attending on Sunday. We pray for everyone attending online. Pray for everyone who's watching this live video, engaging with us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. As we've adapted in so many new ways this last year and a half, that we are adaptable and that we are capable of more than we think. And so, Lord, we continue to pray for those who have been affected by COVID-19, those who are going through cancer treatments, facing surgery, recovering from surgery, those who are in pain, those who are, have been sick with other illnesses. We pray for your healing touch to be with them, to be with their caregivers, their doctors and nurses as an extension of your healing presence. We pray, Lord, for our community, we continue to pray, Lord, for our world and our nation and our state. We pray for continued patience as we slowly and safely make this relaunch happen. So, Lord, be with us now and free our hands to do meaningful work. Energize us to go out and serve and to bring more love into this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining with me today, and I'm not sure how much what the future of our Daily Word at this point is. This has been a way of connecting during the time of pandemic, although we might just do something weekly. I might just do a weekly update and maybe just kind of talk a little bit about the upcoming scripture too. So we are starting to return in person. In fact, last night we had our first fireside group, and I want to thank everybody who came and been wonderful making some new connections too. Um, if you... You know, we've been able to make some new connections via our YouTube channel. It was nice to connect in person with several people. and But we also realize that it's just not the same being on a screen as it is face-to-face. -face. So I'm looking forward as we continue to relaunch our new ministry, as we relaunch our in-person ministries. And it's, some of the other big ministries won't be coming back until the fall. So like Sunday school, jam singers, choir, and bell choir are likely going to be on hiatus until the fall. So 
But our Bible study is going to be starting up very soon, as well as our fireside group, which is actually really more of a virtual or metaphorical fireside. Although, who knows? I could even bring my fire pit if I want. So, but I don't want to burn the, I don't want to cause any fire stuff. So, anyways, I hope you all have a great weekend. If you, and again, if you haven't RSVP'd to the church yet, please do. Um, there's information on how to on our Facebook page. And on our website, and we'll have some information on our website forthcoming too as we get our website updated. So just like I say, please be patient with us as we're going to be doing the best we can, but it's not going to be perfect. So, But there is grace in our imperfections. So with that, have a great weekend. Oh, and also if, for the church cleanup too. If you want to show up at 9.30 tomorrow, we have a lot of outdoor stuff to do tomorrow. So if anybody wants to come, bring a pair of gloves, a rake, and a broom, and... Yeah, well, there's some lists in the fellowship hall. There's also work to be done in the fellowship hall, a little bit more in the sanctuary. So we'll be doing this both tomorrow and Saturday. So with that, have a great weekend, and God bless.